Hello everyone, I'm Kyle Andrews and today I'm going to be going over our high pressure control valves. Uh, anytime you guys have questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask. I'll do my best to answer those questions. I've been at Kimray for eight years. Um, I started out in the construction department. Um, I then moved to the machine shop and I was there for about three years. Um, and then I moved to product applications, which is on the sales side of Kimray. Um, and most recently, I became an account manager, um, and I've been doing that for about a year now. So our high pressure control valves can be used for a number of different applications. Um, some people just think of them as being used for dump valves or for pressure regulation, uh, but they can be used for both and a lot of different other things. You can use this high pressure control valve uh, as a gas regulator. Um, there's a couple different pieces you have to add on to this valve uh, to make it a gas regulator. There's a pilot. Um, supply gas regulator, drip pot, and some other components. Um, but it's a very versatile valve. Um, but just the valve itself can be used uh, as a dump valve, uh, using it with a liquid level controller of some kind or a level switch. So one of the main differences is that stem guided is unbalanced and cage guided is balanced. And what I mean by that, with the stem guided valve that you see here, um, the red is upstream pressure and the blue uh, is downstream pressure. So all the upstream pressure is coming up over the seat and can be resting on that ball. Um, so you have all that pressure that's pushing down on that trim. Uh, so it's unbalanced. Uh, so with larger uh, pressure drops, um, you can have, that valve can have trouble opening up, uh, especially with the bigger trim sizes like our three quarter inch and one inch trims. Uh, can have trouble opening up against all of that pressure. Um, now with our cage guided valves, um, as you see here, um, the, the red pressure is still upstream pressure and the blue is downstream pressure. But you see there's, there's two cu communication holes uh, that take that upstream pressure and put it on top of the piston as well as on bottom. Um, so those two pressures uh, cancel out each other. So it's balanced, so there's no, that valve, whether it's got a 1,000 PSI pressure drop or a 10 PSI pressure drop going across it, uh, it'll still take the same amount of supply signal to open and close that valve. Uh, it's balanced. Another difference between cage-guided and stem-guided is the available sizes. In stem-guided, uh, we offer that in one and two inch connection sizes. Um, with a variety of different trim sizes, um, but only one and two inch body connections. For our cage guided valves, we offer that um, in two inch through 10 inch connection sizes. Um, and then there's a full port and a reduced port for each connection size. The advantage of the cage guided is Right, so an advantage to the stem guided is um, the tight control you can have. So with the cage guided, they're full port valves. Uh, they can move a lot of volume, but on the lower end of flow, they lack the control that stem guided valves can do. Um, so you can, in the one inch um, stem guided valve, you can get down to eighth inch trim. Um, so you can have very tight control uh, with low flow or, or, um, or high pressure drop applications. Uh, you can have you can control flow very well and, and gas regulation as well. With our cage guided valves, we can flow a lot more just because of the size of the valve um, and the trim characteristics. Um, you can have a lot higher pressure drops across a cage guided valve than you can a stem guided. Um, so then you can you can force more through that valve uh, with higher pressure drops. On this chart, we have the crack pressure of our valves. Um, right here, it's all the stem guided valves. Um, so you can see on here, you have uh, the different trim sizes and then also a pressure drop. Um, and so we have, you know, uh, where it'll crack to where it start to open and then at what pressure it is fully open. And that's supply pressure to the valve. We say in our catalog that uh, the high pressure control valves require 30 PSI to actuate. Um, with some of the smaller trim sizes and lower working pressures, uh, you don't necessarily need 30 PSI to, to fully actuate a valve. Um, this chart here is good to have because it shows you 
at what point the valve starts to move, starts to crack open, and then uh, how much supply pressure it takes to actually fully open it with different trim sizes and springs. And then there's also the operating pressure uh, at the very top. Uh, so you can kind of see in the application that your valve is going into uh, exactly how much supply pressure will be required. Um, it's kind of safe to assume 30 PSI um, is going to actuate you know, any of these valves at, under any conditions. So it's always safe just to have 30 PSI. But in case you don't have that and you're wanting to know exactly how much you need, this is a good chart to look at. Um, no, so it would be, I mean, if, you're, if STEM guided is the correct valve for your application, um, th the amount of supply pressure that is required isn't going to affect that choice. Um, so it'd be more like once you choose cage guided or STEM guided, it would be if you are concerned about supply pressure for that specific valve, you could look at this chart. Our stem guided valve is a class four seal, and that's just a metal to metal seat. Um, our cage guided is class six, and that is just, um, a, it's a soft seat seal, um, but then there's also a metal to metal backup on our cage guided valves. Uh, so if that soft seat were to fail, uh, there's still a metal to metal backup. In our stem guided series, uh, there's three different trim types. Uh, snap, nominal, and equal percentage. Um, each one of them uh, opens up at a different rate. Uh, this chart here uh, has the percentage of flow um, and then the percentage of stem travel. Um, so you can see the red line, the snap trim, uh, opens up very quickly. Um, let's say, for example, at 50% uh, uh, open, uh, it's almost 100% of flow. Um, the nominal opens up a little slower. Um, it doesn't really hit 100% open until you get to about 90% uh, of the stem travel. Um, equal percentage opens up very slowly. Um, it doesn't get it to 100% of flow until you're 100% uh, stem travel. So in our snap trim, there's a carbide insert. Um, you see that, that black piece there on the inside of the, the seat. Uh, that's carbide, the ball is carbide, um, so it's really resistive to any erosives uh, in the fluid that might be flowing. Um, the nominal trim um, opens up a little bit slower. This is, can be used for uh, liquid dump valves, um, but the equal percentage trim is used mostly for gas control. Uh, the reason being is because it opens up slowly and so you can get really fine gas control and regulation um, with the equal percentage trim. You can also use equal percentage um, for liquid dumps or maybe you need a smaller CV. So depending on your application um, you can get different materials uh, for the trims. Um, you, know, you have D2 as your standard but we have stainless. Um, we have 17.4, uh, 303, there's different materials for the seats and stems. Um, and so depending on your application, just make sure you get the right material. If the application you're using this valve in requires you to use stainless steel, uh, we offer that material for our stuffing box, the trim, and even the body if necessary. We also offer different spring options for the actuator portion of the valve. Um, if you're working with uh, really high pressures or maybe you don't have enough supply gas to actuate the standard spring, uh, we do offer lighter and heavier springs for all of our control valves. Camry offers a lot of different types of elastomers. Um, depending on your applications, uh, temperatures, um, wear resistance. Um, this is a good chart to look at to find out what's going to work for your application. Um, so Buna or nitrile is our standard. Um, kind of the next step up from that um, is going to be HSN or highly saturated nitrile and that's going to be good for most applications. 
If there's H2S present, HSN is a really good option, um, or CO2. Um, and then it also has a little bit higher temperature. Um, if you want to go kind of a step further than that, um, Aflas or Viton is even a more robust uh, elastomer that you can use. So inside the valve body, there's a stuffing box assembly. Uh, here you can see all the internals. Um, the stuffing box will hold the stem, uh, the packing, and the cage together. The packing can come in two different options. Uh, we have the standard packing, and then we have chevron packing. Um, what the packing does is it keeps the, the pressure and fluid or gas uh, from escaping from around the stem. Uh, so it seals around the stem. Uh, it's live load packing, which just means that there's a spring that's energizing the packing, uh, keeping pressure on it so it's, it's holding tight against the stem. Um, the chevron packing uh, works a little bit better and longer. Um, it also has a higher working temperature. So in this chart, we show volume loss of our different trim materials. Our standard seal trim will be good for most applications. If you're battling sandy conditions or erosive conditions, uh, you can use our carbide trim. It's two and a half times harder than our standard steel trim. Uh, even taking it a step further than that, um, our zirconia trim is 16 times harder than our steel trim, where that would be used for extremely erosive conditions. For both our stem-guided and cage-guided valves, we offer um, a lot of different options for connection types, um, threaded and then flanged. And this chart here lists out the working pressures of, uh, of each flange. Um, so you can see we offer a lot of different uh, flange options uh, depending on the pressures and connection types you guys are working with. So we talked about how you can use high pressure control valves for dump valves uh, or pressure regulation. Um, right here, we have a one-inch stem-guided valve being used uh, in a back pressure application. You can see there's the valve itself, uh, then there's the pilot, a uh, drip pot, and a supply gas regulator. And what the pilot is doing, it's just monitoring uh, the pressure, the upstream pressure, and then it's, e it's making adjustments to the valve to regulate that pressure. Um, if pressure overcomes the spring and the pilot, uh, the pilot will tell the valve to come open to relieve that pressure to get back down to your set point. Um, the drip pot uh, just takes supply gas off the upstream of the valve and knocks out liquids and then the supply gas regulator regulates that down to 30 psi uh, for the pilot. All of our back pressure packages will come fail open or pressure closed. Um, all of our pressure reducing packages will be fail closed. Uh, the reason for that is because in back pressure you're concerned about what's upstream of the valve. Uh, so in case of a uh, failure scenario, um, for back pressure the valve would open to relieve that pressure, saving whatever equipment or whatever is upstream of the valve. Um, for pressure reducing valves, you are concerned about what's downstream of the valve. So if something were to fail with the valve or fail with something, uh, you want that to go closed, to fail closed, so that way you're saving whatever is downstream of that valve. If you're needing to switch the fail position of your valve, uh, it's really easy. All of our top works are field reversible, so you can take the top works apart, um, flip the spring and diaphragm assembly 180 degrees and then put the top back on and that will change the fail position of the valve. So let's say if you're taking a PR package and you're wanting to use it in a back pressure application and you need to change the fail position of the valve, uh, it's very easy to do that. You, know, you don't have to buy a completely new valve, you can just flip the top works of the valve. I hope you found this helpful. If you would like this training in person uh, over this section of the catalog or any other product, uh, please get into contact with your local Kimray store. We'd love to come out to your location or you to come to our store and give you this training.